All right. So the point of this class, of course, large language models are what most people care about these days. That's what's getting all the press. And so the first thing we did in this course was attack those with prompt injection, simple attacks. You can see one of the security flaws of them and talk about their general security flaws. And then we went through a stage of understanding how simpler machine learning models work that do simple classes like tasks like fitting a line or sorting categories or rec recognizing images. And now we can get to the large language models. So we're going to talk about the Bloom large language model. There are a bunch of them. And Bloom is one that is completely public and open source for academic research. So that's nice, although a lot of them are open. So uh, first thing I have to do is install some libraries again. So let me get a new workbook. Uh, move to trash. New notebook. All right, so this is going to install a transformer. And these are transformers for Bloom. Uh, the transformers are the process of converting words, essentially, into these vectors we talked about before. Um, and now we have to download the model called Bloom. It comes in various uh, sizes. We're going to download the model that has 560 million parameters which is fairly small for a large language model. I think uh, most of them are in the billions, and I think chat GPT 4.0 has a trillion parameters or something like that. So this is a large language model, but not the biggest one by any means. Uh, all right. This one is only 560 million parameters to encode natural language. Now it's downloading chunks of data here in various uh, phases. And see, this is 1.12 gigs, and there are going to be more. So it's pretty big, you know. It's... Now I'm going to download a lot of these things. And when it's done, we can now uh, get ready to get it to do something. So I'm going to give it a prompt, why is the sky blue? And then give me 50 more words after that and run through the tokenizer and uh, reply with the answer. So let's see how it works. All right, it's ready. And now we can try different searches. So now we have prepared a model. We have downloaded a pre-trained model, which is ready to uh, uh, predict words from knowledge of English for being trained on a large amount of data. And we've given it a prompt and specified the parameters. Now we can, there are various ways to do this. Now, the simplest way to do this is a greedy search. A greedy search will just start from your prompt and try to guess what the next word is. It'll try various words, and whatever the most likely word is, it will always use just that word. That's why they call it a greedy search. You try to grab the most value out of every single step. And so it should give us 50 more words after the prompt, why is the sky blue? Technically, it uses these things called tokens that are not exactly words. Like if you have a word that ends in like S or ING, that extension will be a separate token and such. But it's approximately one token per word. Okay, so here, why is the sky blue? It is, said the girl, but it is not the same as the sky. It is not the same as the sky, said the boy. It is the same as the sky. You're getting repetitive nonsense. Now, this is what happens when you do a greedy search. You always take the most likely next word, so you're likely to fall into a little loop where the words go in a loop, and now you're going to go over and over going around this loop because you're, there's no randomness. There's no variation. So that's uh, not very pleasing. So we can try this one called top K and top P. This lets you have a adjustable amount of randomness. That's what these parameters are like. Um, you now allow it to not always choose the most likely next word. Sometimes it'll choose a second or third choice, most likely next word. So there'll be more variation in the output. And it will appear to be more natural. Okay. Why is the sky blue? She asked, laughing. They said it's a good idea to keep it dark because it makes people sleepy. 
She was just a little too old. She couldn't remember how old they were. So you notice the sentences are pretty well formed, but it makes no sense at all. It doesn't have any long range coherence. And if you run it again, I'll leave that there so we can see it. Let's make another block. It is random. So if you run exactly the same thing again, you'll get a different bunch of random nonsense. She asked, isn't that so, said the boy, you're crazy. It's not so much the blue as the sky. Surely you're right. So, you know, it's... um. This is why I think this is what's really important for everyone to understand. It's not intelligent by human standards, not at all. It doesn't understand the words. It doesn't have any idea what it's saying. It doesn't care if it's repeating the same thing over and over. It doesn't care if it's forgetting what it's talking about and talking about something else. It's just solving a mathematical problem of how to put words in an order that will be statistically like the order you find in English. So it's like shuffling dice with words on them and arranging them in a pattern that matches the sort of pattern it's seen on the internet. So you see the structure of the sentence is more or less okay. It has a quote and then said the girl and then but it is not the same as the sky. So it's got a subject and a verb. It's like it has absorbed the contents of a grammar textbook. So it understands how to lay out sentences, but it doesn't have any idea how to make any sense or understand anything. But it creates the illusion of that, which causes humans to imagine that it's intelligent because it looks like a human wrote it. And so um, there's another one you can try called a beam search. Now, a beam search looks not just at the next word, but at the next several words, and then tries to choose the most common phrase that it should use. So it's going to have a little more coherence as you go down the, the length of the writing. And the beam search also has no randomness, this one. So it should be the same every time. So we'll try it. <coughs> now this top P and top K, I think that also used a beam search. I think it combined three different methods. Okay, why is the sky blue? It is, but it is not the same as the blue sky. It is the same sky as when the sun shines on the horizon and the moon is in its place. So now you've got a sentence, which sort of makes sense. It is the same sky as when the sun shines on the horizon and the moon is in its place. So it knows that when you talk about the sun, you could then talk about the moon. You know, it knows how to make a relatively long sentence that has the right structure as a sentence, but it doesn't make any sense. And if we run the same thing again, we should get exactly the same answer because there is no parameter here for randomness or temperature. It's not using any random variation to add to the probability prediction. So the same model trained on the same data should produce exactly the same output. Yep, and there it is, exactly the same output with, you know, more coherent long-range structure, but still making no sense. And so there's a few uh, flags to find there uh, to play with Bloom. And that, I think, is quite useful to understand how these large language models work.